freaking at the Freakers Ball, y'all, right here on Friday night. Uh, what is today? May 25th, 2018. This will be the final Freakers for May 2018. Except this is actually supposed to be balls to the wall. However, <laughs> certain realizations have come to mind uh, as, I, as I started to set up this show. Uh, and, you know, I, I do balls to the wall when I need to, whenever Moose Girl goes out of town. And she is out of town this weekend. She is off to the Revival Festival. It's festival season. So I'm going to finish need, need to finish getting my, my balls to the wall set up, reset up. Uh, I did one little part, which was to set, you know, for the now and the next messages. But I didn't do the other part, which is over here in my Webcam Max program software, uh, where I have pictures, balls-to-the-wall background, and the balls-to-the-wall video. <laughs> that I had all set up at some point, but uh, I haven't, yeah. Anyway, so I need to do that. Uh, of course, I'm thinking it's possible now, and I, and I know this interests you all greatly. I'm thinking that uh, I may just want to go ahead and do it in OBS. It's the open broadcast system uh, that I use uh, now in conjunction with Webcam Max, but I, I don't really need Webcam Max in order to do it uh, anymore with the open broadcast system, OBS. It's, it's a great little program, and it's just one other thing I, I could not run if I desire, if I got around to it. But, I, you know, I paid like 50 bucks for this webcam, Max. <laughs> so I kind of like using it and hanging on to it. Um, anyway, welcome to the Balls of the Wall show. This is Grim there. We are live tonight here on reallibertymedia.com. On channel one there. That's the, that's the channel. Or you can go, uh, if you want, you can go straight on to vonlive.tv slash reallibertymedia for the video there. But, of course, the chat is here. Unless you have your own IRC client, which I, again, highly recommend. And I'll get to something about IRC client in a minute. Uh, but we are also live on the RLMRadio.xyz, the RLM Radio stream, uh, which is available on reallibertymedia.com. It is available on irc.freenode.net. Uh, it is also available on TuneIn and um, Internet Radio and uh, wherever else. We're, we're, we're in several places. <laughs> I've been throwing nickels at my screen all day, not want a taco, and all they do is bounce back. Some of them hit me right in the head, so um, I don't I don't know if that's helping. Uh, anyway, so we're out there. So welcome to the people on Minds. If anybody's over there, tuned in uh, or to Twitter, or wherever. Um, <laughs> yeah, ouch. Anyway, I wanted to mention this. Uh, like I said, in case you have your own. IRC client. Now, I, I have been, over the many, many years that I've been using IRC, for the first many, many years, and still to this day, uh, use a program called MIRC, Merck. Um, and Barman runs on Merck. And and so, but for the last several years here, uh, on this, on the computer that I mainly use, whether it was this one and or the previous one, I think maybe actually the, even the one before that, um, I've been using KVIRC, but it had a problem oh, a couple of weeks back now, and 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 it and I couldn't make it go back to the way it was without rebuilding everything from scratch. I I had all the stuff backed up, but it wouldn't take it. So I said, screw it. Let me find. Let me let me maybe use Merck on here. But then I thought to myself, well, Merck is great and it's cool, but it's really old school. But I love Merck because of the scripting language. So I found this pro, this this uh, client IRC client program, and it's called ADI IRC, and it uses you can use the complete Merck scripting language, and it's got basically a Merck interface to it, but it's got a bunch of other stuff to it. I just can't say enough good stuff about this program ADI IRC. Um, and, and, and again, with Merck, uh, much like Webcam Max, it's a program that I paid for it, so do I really want to let it go? But I can, there are a few variations between Merck scripting and ADI IRC scripting. Just some just real minor stuff that is not hard to work around. Um, 
but I've got a lot of scripts in Barman. <laughs> so anyway, I started redoing the uh, the trivia script for the for the ADI IRC one uh, in case maybe someday I want to move Barman over to that. Um, but it, it actually uh, it's, it's a little more efficient. Uh, uses uh, uses a few less resources. Uh, anyway, just something for you guys to consider. Yeah, you know I think I should put a uh, a, a, a link here into the into the thing. And, and you can check it out for yourself, but I, I can put it in the end of the blog post. And um, did I do this before? No, I don't think I did. Um, and again, if you're using Linux, it runs under Wine. Um, I think under Mac it'll do the same. I, I, I don't know really much about Mac. Um, I'm not a I'm not I'm not a Mac person. Um, but it but it's a good it's cool it's uh. <laughs> What can I say? I like it. <laughs> That's all there is to say. Um, but, you know, it does things, you, you could do things with it you can't do with Merck, uh, such as add in the little smiley face icon thingies when people smile or frown or whatever. And you can put whatever ones you want in. It doesn't come with any, but you can just load up the ones you want. Um, it gives you an option for that. And Oh, okay. It changes my nick back to my nick if I ping out and come in, come in as like Grimner 9 it automatically changes my nick back to my nick now I know there's a really easy Merck script to do that but uh, I'm just saying it's built in <laughs> and a big bonus the developer of the application sits in a channel here on Freenode and he, he'll answer questions he'll answer questions for you on 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 the program on on different functionalities of it and or take suggestions as to what else you might want it to do. Anyway, that's all. <laughs> that's all on that. Um, uh, now I got a I got a thing today from uh, Jules. Jewel, a thing, an email, <laughs> a thing. Yeah, I'm a real technical whiz kid. Uh, I, I, I got a, a, a email from Jules over at ucy.tv, and they've been running their their, their uh, network over there for a long time, and and she's got a lot of really good shows over there. Uh, I, I say that without actually really knowing, but assuming because I know a lot of people here uh, check out shows on ucy.tv. I I I I know they have a lot of shows over there, but I don't listen to them. Anyway, here's the email that I got from Jules today. Hi Grim, it's Jules. My health is going to force me to give up running the network in a few weeks. So, I was wondering if you would be interested in airing any of the hosts or taking on the domain name. My life needs a total reboot of focusing on my health by completely changing my routine. So the time has come for me to let it go. I was thinking if hosts wanted to continue broadcasting, uh, maybe they could get a Spreaker account. That's what I'm going to do, not me, her, Jules, uh, with with my occasional show. Please let me know if you have any interest. Anyway, so I, I wrote her back and I and I said, hey, just let, let's talk on Skype tomorrow. Sorry about your health issues. And uh, so we'll talk tomorrow uh, more about that um, and and her deal over there. My question to you, yeah, UCY, UCY.TV. Uh, my question to you all, because I know some of you do listen to um, some of the UCY shows, and I don't. I, like I said, I don't. I, I don't know anything about the shows, um, but I, and, and from, from what I'm guessing, from what I'm just from comments made in the chat by various people, is that they're probably minarchists at best, um, which, you know, that's fine. I, 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 any of them over there that want to use the RLM radio stream to broadcast, I'll be glad to take them, every, every one of them. I, I don't care. Uh, whether anybody will actually listen to them or not is a whole other story. And whether they want to get into our chat if they're if they if that's you know if they're still hanging on to some idea of government being a good thing, then they that may or may not work out for them. But if they want to use the stream during times when when you know it's available, um, I have no problem with letting them use the stream, and um, 
and to, to do their broadcasts on. And uh, and if they want to post blogs on RLM, I'm okay with that. Uh, and if they want to use the chat, I'm okay with that. Um, as long as it has minimal impact on my... <laughs> anyway, so just uh, anybody that's got any comments uh, on UCY and how they might um, fit with RLM, um, let me know. Well, I, I don't know who's running the show over there, the chat over there, Gooberzilla, and why they would ban you or not. Um, from what I understand, Hands was banned, and, well, you know, <laughs> he's probably been banned from most places. I know that Hal really likes uh, uh, some show that he listens to on, on Sundays on, on UCY, and I know that... Uh, Flash and Cirque like Jules show before the first cup, but it doesn't sound like she's going to be doing her show before the first cup, at least not on a regular basis any longer. Um, well, <laughs> that's that's a that that is a big point, but it's a it's minor. Um, I I understand a lot of people um, they they still want the the radiation. Nah, they still want the uh, <laughs> the bad stuff that comes out of the nuclear reactors, so they don't want to switch to the thorium. But hey, I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, <laughs> anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up and let and let you all. If anybody's got some comments about UCY, about the host, about the shows, uh, Vinny, you know, he he came from UCY. Um, whatever, it's all good. It's all fine. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, we're going to kick it off with some jams right here, right now. Uh, one I found earlier today, I think. Yeah, today. Maybe yesterday. I found this yesterday. Doesn't matter, does it? Doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, it's Joe Bonamassa uh, when he was a youngster, but it's a new video. It was just published yesterday, so. Um. <laughs> Enjoy. Do you guys mind if I just play a little guitar for you, Dave? <laughs> That was AC DC from the Rare Songs Collection with Cold Hearted Man. Apparently that was supposed to be on Power Age, but they didn't. Uh, they decided to cut it. And anyway, uh, before that we had Simo doing Shine. I love that song. And we kicked it off there with Joe Bonamassa, just a little guitar solo uh, from a concert he did for the a New Day Yesterday tour live show there. And uh, he's just jamming. He's just jamming. There was nothing really. Uh... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Joe Jammin. Joe Jam. No, not quite like Toe Jam. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway. <laughs> what, do we got? what do we got going on here? What do we got going on here? <laughs> Funny stuff. Dang, it was like 96 degrees here today. It's not even it's not even officially uh summer here yet, but you know don't don't be telling uh don't be telling Mother Nature that. She thinks it is. And she's sending us summer temperatures. Uh we don't even get that too many of those during summer. Not quite making seventy up there in Bethtown, but <sighs> Yeah, well <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't know what to say. Oh, Poxified's hanging around tonight. He's he's got a few requests in here. I'm gonna play one this next trip around. Uh, Pox, are you out there? You listening? You tuned in, brother? All right. Well, we heard from Vinny today. Vin E. Vincent Easley. Uh, he's back in Arkansas, his uh, hometown, homeland there. Home something. Oh, by the way, uh, I, I, I and uh, I, maybe you might get one or two, but. Uh, how's the uh, audio now on the video stream? 
It should be clipped down. I mean, it's, it's all in the green. I'm, I'm okay. Still clipping. Beth says. All right, I can bring it down a little more. All right, all right. And, and it might be, it might be something else going on um, with this encoder uh, on on this OBS. I, I don't know if I can change encoders or not, but uh, well, um, hopefully it'll be fine. It, it doesn't come out that way on the on the audio stream or on the recording because I got different encoders going on there. Um, volume lowered, but clipping on high end. All right, let me let me try something else here. All right, I'll, I'll bring the volume back up and just move the mic up to my nose. <laughs> yeah, it could be uh, the the encoder may be more sensitive than what I'm used to. Uh, on OBS than it is on BUT or than it is on uh, Audacity. Whatever. I don't know, man. I'm trying. I'm trying to get it there. All right. Now, I I'm going to share a story here with you. I, I, I don't know if you guys have all heard this or not, or even if you ever knew that part of Google's original mission statement <laughs> original mission statement uh, was um, don't be evil that was part of their, their original mission statement don't be evil apparently they no longer they've removed that from their mission statement yes and as uh, it's <laughs> it's conduct statement whatever um, so Google removes don't be evil from its conduct as employees quit in droves over Project Maven as Google has removed the phrase don't be evil from its code of conduct, this comes as at least 4,000 employees have expressed outrage over the company's decision to work with the Pentagon's Project Maven and amid a leaked video uh, called the Selfish Ledger, exposing internal Google dialogue to create a dystopia run by the big social giant. Social? What's social about Google? I don't know. Anyway, Google has removed multiple instances of its infamous Don't Be Evil motto from its code of conduct, Gizmodo reported. Wayback Machine, uh, April 21st, 2018 archive, shows the three-word phrase still present. And that's not even way back. That's recently back. Uh, about a month ago. So it was still there about a month ago. Um... And it says, don't be evil, evil. Google generally applies those words to how we serve our users, but don't be evil is much more than that. Yes, it's about providing our users unbiased access to information, focusing on their needs, and giving them the best products and services that we can. But it's also uh, about doing the right thing more generally, following the law, acting honorably, do those go together? Anyway, uh, and treating coworkers with courtesy and respect. The code of conduct is one of the ways we put don't be evil into practice. It's built around the recognition that everything we do is uh, we do in connection with our work at Google will be and should be measured against the highest possible standards of ethical business conduct. We set that bar that high for practical as well as aspirational reason, reasons. Our commitment to the highest standards helps us hire great people, uh, build great products, and attract loyal, you, loyal users. Trust and mutual respect among employees and users are the foundation of our success and are something we need to earn every day, which apparently they're no longer interested in. They're no longer interested in um, <laughs> any kind of respect and if that was their foundation of success them removing that has got to be the foundation of their failure um, then it says in May you notice the don't be evil phrases are no longer present an entry on, Mar on May 4th 2018 uh, it says although the new code removes the phrase from those paragraphs there is still mention of it at the very end where it it states, and remember, don't be evil. 
<laughs> and remember, as a as an add-on kind of thought, don't be evil. And and if you see something that that you think isn't right, speak up. Well, they did, and and they all had to leave because you guys weren't going to do anything about it, because you're you're busy building bombs, I mean, uh, uh, drones that will surveil people and kill them. Um, yes, Google, you are evil. You are evil. Now, I I suppose you probably all, not just myself, because I got them from dozens of companies. Um, <laughs> the GDPR thing. Um, <laughs> get them from anybody that you may have been subscribed to that is a company that has uh, 250 or more employees, whether or not they're in the EU, uh, because it only applies to the EU, the GDPR. Let me see if I can find my uh, thing here. Uh, from the actual GDPR site. Uh, from Intersoft's consulting here. GDPR is the General Data Protection Regulation. And uh, they have in this article here all of the various provisions of what is supposed to encompass. But it sounds like to me what it's going to be used for is to just go after companies uh, and, and make a few bucks for themselves uh, rather than really trying to actually protect your data uh, or you. <laughs> so all these different places sent out, I don't know how many of these freaking notices I got, but uh, tons and tons of them. And, and, uh, and that went in effect today, the GDPR. Um, <laughs> so uh, let me see if I can find the, uh, the, uh, the, the principles. Let's go to the principles of GDPR. Um, because this is what they say it's about and why it's in place. It says, uh, personal data shall be, A, processed lawfully, fairfully, fairly, and in a transparent manner in relation to the data subject, lawfulness, fairness, and transparency. Shall be, B, collected for specified, explicit, and legitimate purposes, and not further processed in a manner that is incompatible with those purposes. Further processing for archiving purposes in the public interest, whatever that means, scientific uh, or historical research purposes, or statistical purposes, shall be in accordance with Article 89, which they give you a link here to, but it's not here, so you can't. And you just be reading this. You have to go keep on going off to all kinds of other things. Not to be considered incompatible with in initial purpose uh, purpose limitation. Adequate, relevant, and limited to what is necessary in relation to the purposes for which they are processed. Uh, data minimization. Uh, anyway, it's 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 it's, it's really long. It, it, I mean, it goes through all kinds of different things. So. Um, Hey Google. <laughs> oh, yeah. Google came and left. Thanks Google. <laughs> uh yeah, anyway, yeah, they've got the uh, general provisions, the principles, the uh uh r rights of the data subject. That's what you that that's what you are. A data subject. You're not a humanoid a person. No. You're a data subject. <laughs> it talks about the controller, the processor, transfers of personal data to third countries or international third countries. Uh, whatever. It goes through all kinds of different things. Uh, re remedies, liabilities, and penal penalties. Well, I'm sure that's the uh, biggest uh, section there, penalties. <laughs> Oh, God. All right. Anyway, um, so that's the GDPR. It went into, like I said, you, know, you probably all got dozens of the of emails from various things you may have signed up for over the many years. I got emails from companies that I that I may have got onto a mailing list or, or signed up with an account for or whatever that I haven't seen for years, and I got emails from them. 
which is uh, kind of a drawback of, of maintaining a, an email address for a long time. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right, we're going to go some more jams here. Uh, cream, you like cream? You know cream, right? Eric Clapton? Ginger Baker? Yeah, you know Cream, right? All right. Uh, well, well, this is a, a Cream song, but done by Mr. Bonamassa, and and and, it, and it's called S W L A B R, <laughs> which is Wait, 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 wait. Let me get this straight. Because I always missed, I, I, I thought it was different um, than than what it is. And I thought it was, she walks like a bearded rainbow, but it's something else. It's The W, I think, is something else. It wasn't walks. She was, that's what it is. She was like a bearded rainbow. But, uh, but it, it's actually... I, I thought it was she walks like a bearded rainbow, <laughs> and I thought that for all the time until Joe Bonamassa released this last week uh, or a couple weeks back, a few weeks back now. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah, exactly. What the hell does that mean? Uh, you can go look it up. There's there's all kinds of uh, uh, there's all kinds of uh, <laughs> descriptions and definitions. Uh, 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 and the explanations of what the hell that means. She was like a bearded rainbow. Because when he sent out the email, <laughs> I got it. I said, Joe, you got that wrong. But then I had to go and look it up, and he was right. And I was wrong all these years. Anyway, here you go. Joe Bonamassa, S-W-L-A-B-R. <laughs> All right, that there was Queensryche doing a Silent Lucidity, a Puxified request. Thanks, Pox. Um, I, I like a lot of Queensryche music, and I actually, you know, I don't mind that song normally, typically. But uh, there's dozens of Queensryche songs that prefer over that one. Uh, anyway, before that, we had Leo Maraccioli uh, <laughs> doing his version of Folsom Prison Blues. Uh, he's always takes such a unique take on stuff. And we kicked it off there with Joe Bonamassa with S-W-L-A-B-R. Uh, on the British uh, British uh, Blues Explosion concert or tour, um, I, you know, it, it doesn't say where that particular uh, show was, was at, where, where you filmed that at. It does list the t tickets and tour dates here, but... Uh, Still, it's not sp sp specifying that particular one. Um, he does have a show coming up in San Antonio tomorrow, <laughs> and again on Sunday. Uh, so, <laughs> if you're interested in going see Joe, he he will be in San Antonio tomorrow and Sunday. Um, so, uh, you have to get off your wallet for Joe. He he ain't, he ain't cheap. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so. Uh, I don't see any comments though as to where that uh, that particular show was from, um, but it was uh, it's part of the British Blues Explosion tour, uh, where which he's playing a bunch of stuff, you know, from uh, whatever Disraeli Gears. I think that's the album that's on. Um, I, I, <laughs> I don't know. So I, I get some Creep albums, but uh, you know I don't listen to them all the time, so. Saying exactly which song is on which album, I I couldn't tell you. <laughs> oh man! And and if you ask me during the next set what I played during this set, I'm not going to be able to tell you. <laughs> I, I know I started both sets with with the Joe Bonamassa song, but you know I could do that. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> so this weekend it's a, an extended weekend for most Americans uh, because it's Dead Soldier 
Dead Soldier Weekend. So those of you that uh, celebrate Dead Soldiers, this is your time. What? Is that what, is that what this is about? Celebrating Dead Soldiers? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get back to that. We we got some we got some stuff. Oh, was that right? Yeah, no. Oh, let's do that one. Oh wait, maybe this one. Ah, no, we'll do this one. Because we can. Ah, yeah. So, uh, Dead Soldier Day is November 11th in Canada. Okay. Well, they have a bunch here. I don't know. I mean, this is Memorial Day, which is Dead Soldier Day. And they also have Veterans Day, which somehow becomes also Dead Soldier Day, just as Memorial Day becomes Veterans Day. Uh, you know, it's like every soldier where you have a flag, every holiday where you have a flag, you celebrate the dead and the living, apparently. July 4th, I think they get that, too. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't know what else you get as far as dead soldiers. But that is this weekend. But apparently it's also uh, unofficially and more more, more frequently the kickoff to summer where people have big barbecues. And and, and so that's, that's really what it is. It's summer kickoff weekend and uh, go and eat hot dogs and hamburgers. <laughs> I, I think that's I think that's more of it than anything. All right, we don't need to look at that. Um, let me see if I got some other stuff here. Oh yeah, Lyme diseasers. You know because they've been bringing up Lyme disease a lot this year, and 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 because Lyme disease is nasty stuff, and you don't want Lyme disease. Um, where, where did that go? There was a little pop-up thing there, and it went away. All right, whatever. Um, you have the cure. You have the cure. Not and they, they always tell you Lyme disease is not curable, but you have the cure. Yeah, lemon disease is fine. Any of the other citrus are fine. Tangelos or Mangoes? No, mangoes are not citrus. Oranges. <laughs> orange disease. I, th I think that's what Trump has, orange disease. <laughs> anyway, from uh, ushealthtimes.com. Yes, it is fruitist. Uh, cannabis kicks Lyme disease to the curb. Cannabis, you have the cure. Since Lyme disease has been controversial for some years, many medical practitioners misdiagnose it, while several think that it's mental. With Lyme disease, there are so many symptoms and so many debilitating, agonizing manifestations that it's often misdiagnosed as multiple sclerosis, chronic fatigue, lupus, or a mental issue. Lyme disease is caused by spirochetal bacteria of the Boreala genus. <laughs> sure you need to know that. The spirochetes are composed of about 40% DNA and have the double membrane envelopes that makes them difficult to trace and kill. They are apparently able to hide in deep tissue and change shapes to di disguise themselves. They're somewhat similar to bacteria behind syphilis. They're like syphilis. There's the pox, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, as Lyme disease affects the nervous system and the brain also. Going uh, through the medical system with Lyme disease is like being a ball in an old-fashioned pinball game machine. Being on antibiotics forever is risking serious adverse uh, events or at least reducing one's immunity to invite all sorts of other complications. All this without a complete cure. But now there is considerable hope with cannabis. Cannabis Lyme Successes. 
There are two levels of handling Lyme with cannabis, managing symptoms well by smoking marijuana or completely reversing the disease with cannabis oil. Not many, well, except in here, are aware of the cannabis oil pioneered by Rick Simpson a few years ago. Many years ago now. Uh, Rick has said that most of the healing qualities of cannabis are lost in the smoke, which I don't agree with, but that's okay. The, there is definitely uh, different and more potent healing qualities in the cannabis oil that uh, Simpson came up with. Alexis diagnosed the large state Lyme disease uh, with Alexis, is a girl's name, diagnosed with late state late stage Lyme disease is an example of someone handling symptoms without pharmaceuticals by smoking marijuana. She was on antibiotics long enough for her gastrointestinal tract to be damaged and to be hospitalized with hemorrhagic colitis. She was taken off antibiotics and put on several strong pain prescriptions that were barely effective while putting her, uh, her into lower emotional states. Then, she tried smoking weed. That's right. That routine handled most of her nausea, enabled her to eat well and avoid wasting away, helped her sleep better, and eased the pain while elevating her mood. She maintains that marijuana has been the best thing for her Lyme disease. Some have discovered the solution of using cannabis oil for Lyme disease. Cannabis oil is a highly concentrated substance that's extracted and reduced from large amounts of cannabis with a good balance of THC and other cannabinoids. It has become increasingly available in states that allow medical marijuana, but it's also available underground. If you search on the internet, uh, this is the stuff that has been curing cancer lately and all kinds of other stuff. Shelley White's Lyme disease was so debilitating that she endured at least 10 seizures daily for a year and a half. She began smoking marijuana from a pipe and then switched to inhaling it through a vaporizer. Just from that, her seizures stopped. Then she decided to go to the next level, cannabis oil. After a month of the oil, she was able to return to work and school. At the time of writing her story, she was happy to announce that she could now move out and live on her own with an, and enjoy a normal social life. Cannabis oil. <laughs> That's straight 30 weight, man. We don't need, we don't need that, those fixy, uh, fa fancy uh, mixed weights. <laughs> yeah, straight 30 weight. <laughs> Who needs multi-viscosity? Anyway, so it's a great story, and 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 if you happen to wind up, and and you, you, the thing is, you never really know if you've got the Lyme disease because of the the various ways it it uh, affects you. So um, there you go. Though if you, if you smoke weed, you never you you will probably never realize it because the the weed kills off the symptoms. So there's that. <laughs> oh man <laughs> I tell ya what is this oh yes I think this is kind of interesting let me see here I don't exactly recall oh yeah I, I looked this up and it's an old article it's from 2013 um but because of some of the things coming out these days, I decided to look this up. And so here it is for you. From from April August August twelfth, twenty thirteen. On Politifact dot com. United Nations document shared on social media says civilian gun confiscation is in the works for the United States. So you'd have to go back and plot out uh, the various school shootings uh, since 2013 uh, and, and prior to that and, and see how it kicked up after, after this document came out. Because the document apparently came out in 2013 as well. 
even though it's part of Agenda 21. Whatever. A reader recently sent a realistic-looking document from the UN with a pretty explosive claim that the world body is moving forward with plans to help mem member nations disarm their civilian populations of military-grade, concealable, and hunting-grade firearms. I think that covers about everything. <laughs> <laughs> concealable would be the, any pistol military grade which you can't get anyway um, and hunting grade which is everything else if you have a rifle or a shotgun or a, uh, any other type of firearm that's not concealable it's going to be considered hunting grade and even ammunition and components to manufacture ammunition uh, Americans they will get, well, the First Amendment's pretty much dead anyway. I mean, if you try and say anything that offends any, <laughs> anybody, let me just put it that way, uh, more sensitive, if you say anything that offends anybody, uh, then, then you know, that you're pretty much a criminal at that point. Um, so the First Amendment's pretty much been dead. Freedom of press, of course, is dead. Uh <laughs> Freedom of assembly has been dead for a long time. What else is in that First Amendment? Um, <laughs> all that, all that, all that crap said. Yeah, yeah. Out of, out of those first ten amendments, which are supposedly the quote Bill of Rights unquote, the, the only thing I don't know for sure that has been violated, and only because it hasn't been convenient for them to violate it yet, is the Third Amendment, uh, which deals with quartering of soldiers in your home. Meaning they they could just take your home and put a bunch of soldiers in there. So I I said it has to be convenient. They haven't had a need to do that yet. So so that one is still um, hanging on, basically intact. But all the rest of them have been smashed beyond recognition. <laughs> Constitution. Americans who support the right to bear arms. How about the right to protect yourself. Uh, have long expressed worry that the U.S. government is on the verge of taking away lawful citizens' guns. How about, I don't care about the lawful so much, I'm not a citizen, and uh, yeah. Anyway, and, and that concern has only increased when a U.N. body is believed to play a supporting role. The document sent to, the, to us by a reader would seem to be, pardon the expression, a smoking gun. <laughs> Specifically, the document has the trappings of officialdom, the blue UN logo at the top, along with the name of the UN, Office for Disarmament Affairs. The UN has an Office of Disarmament Affairs. A real office, yes, it is. It's dated August 5th, 2013, labeled restricted. The headline reads, Disarmament Commission, Civilian Weapons Confiscation Study Group, and is filled with believable bureaucratic jargon, such as the creation of a codification framework that will need to undergo a full review by the Office of the Secretary General. And it gives you the full text here. I'm not going to read it to you. But uh, just bear in mind that... that uh, they don't want you to have a gun. They don't want you to be armed uh, in, in any way possible. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't even want you to have a BB gun or a water gun. Hey, my water gun's probably all right. <laughs> a Nerf pistol. <laughs> they, don't, they don't want you to make your, your thumb and forefinger in, into the shape of a gun. Uh, they, that, that's, that's, that's coming next. They're going to take your hand if you do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, just the first two fingers. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, well, they take your thumb too. They don't want that 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 thumb is uh, like the the uh, the trigger thing, you know. <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna play another batch of, batch of jams right here right now. Uh, this uh, first, it's it's um, it's it's not Joe Bonamassa. 
It's not Joe Bonamassa like the first two sets were. <laughs> this this is by a band called uh, Ch Chicken Foot. Chicken Foot. You know who Chicken Foot is? Look him up. Oh yeah, Werewolves of London, Warren Z. Vaughn, right there for you. I think that was a Hansel request. Um, <laughs> can't be sure, but uh, I think it was. Uh, anyway, before that was uh, the George Baker selection with um, um, Little Green Bag. <laughs> I'm not stoned, really. And we kicked it off with Chicken Foot doing soap on a rope. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry for you guys on the audio stream. I had to reboot the server because I thought there might have been an issue. Because uh, somebody was here in the chat was reporting that they were hearing two songs at once. I, I didn't realize that they had two players going at once. But somebody else had reported that earlier. So, uh, in, uh, you know, whatever. Just to be safe, I just rebooted the server there towards the end of Werewolves of London. So, uh, anyway, it should be good now. And if you're still hearing two songs, then you still got two players going. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oh, it's cooling off nice here. It was up to 96 today, now it's down to 61. At least according to my little desktop widget here on, on my computer, it says, it says that, double the freakers, double the fun. Yes, indeed. <laughs> it's, it's, it's freakers, balls to the wall. You know, I, I started with the, uh, the, the freakers ball song because I forgot to load up the, the balls to the wall song. Which is fine, you know, it works fine. Uh, I, I just, uh, <laughs> and, and I also forgot to load up some other things for the for the for the balls of the wall. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's that. Um. <laughs> oh man, oh, yeah, I'll save that one till next week. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get the moose back next week. Wait, it's Friday? Dang. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's do this one. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. I just like this song. I found it today. Never heard of this band before. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll start We'll start the next set with that one. It's not Saturday. It's 10.29, 10.30 now uh, on, on May 25th, which is a Friday. Here, in where I live, you, however, East Coast time, don't have that same uh, thing. <laughs> You've got it different than I do. Oh, you're, you're a time traveler. You're in tomorrow. <laughs> hey, knock that off. Uh, yes, you are living in the past, as Jethro Tull says. Yes, indeed. Cowboy Tech, you West Coasters are living in the past. Which, considering... Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mountain time is the only real time. All other time is, is all made up. Wait. This time is made up, too. All time is made up. <sighs> all right. Where do we want to go? What do we want to say? Oh, here's a good one. Now, I, I thought maybe it was... You know, too many burgers and fries or too many uh, cakes or cookies or whatever. But apparently that's not it. If you are what the world in general, the humans in general, consider to be overweight and or a.k.a. fat, it's none of that. It's not the food. It's not the, 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 the lifestyle that's making you fat. All it is, apparently, is dust. That's right. Dust is making you fat. 
this according to the Sun, uh, uh, or via the New York Post dot com, but uh, originally published on the Sun. Um, obesity, according to them, and, uh, yeah, yeah, you're biting too much dust. Obesity is becoming the health crisis across the globe. But are chemicals and dust in our homes partly to blame? It's solely to blame. Solely, it's all dust. Recent studies have suggested substances dubbed obesogens, got that, obesogens, found in household dust, packaging, plastics, and furniture, can affect our hormones and build up the fat in our body. The most recent report made a bold claim that removing shoes when entering the house to avoid bringing in contaminants like dust, the, the, the dust comes in just fine without shoes, let me tell you that right now, and or re removing and minimizing carpet at home, I would like, like to get rid of the carpet, but I can't afford a, a hardwood floor, um, could help people stay slim. So there you go, just take off your shoes when you get home and uh, get rid of the carpet and you'll be, you'll be slim, trim, and fit. <laughs> The Portuguese study also su suggests that reducing the amount of plastics in the home, avoiding cleaning products. I try to avoid cleaning products, <laughs> but I don't think that's what they're talking about. Um, frequently vacuuming and buying fresh food over processed products will help banish obesogens from the home. Lead author Anna Katarina Sousa at the, of the University of a vario and whatever, uh, said, obesogens can be found in almost everywhere, and our diet is the main source of exposure, as some pesticides and artificial sweeteners are obesogens. Equally, they are present in plastics and home products, so completely reducing exposure to it is extremely difficult, but to significantly reduce it is not only feasible, but not that hard to do. Just eat dirt, less calories. Well, apparently that's not the right answer, Pox. Yeah, because uh, this this dust, dirt has uh, has obesogens in it. <laughs> it goes on to say, so what exactly are obesogens, and are they making you fat? Chemicals that enter our body and alter the way our body stores fat are referred to as obesogens. Now they are, since this article came out, apparently. Uh, the, the program, or they program our cells in two ways. First, they promote fat accumulation through increasing the number of fat cells, or uh, they make it more difficult for us to lose weight by changing our ability to burn calories. Yeah, see there, exactly. Uh, a word somebody from the internet made up uh, as an excuse for why fat people get fat. <laughs> No, no, no! It's dust. It's the dust. You got dust. You got you got obesogens. If you got obesogens, then you're gonna be fat. Hey, no matter what you do, you can eat all the all the all the other stuff you want. But nope, if you got the obesogens, you are just screwed. <laughs> well, you may have conditions. That's that's a whole different thing altogether. But uh, the obesogens are getting you. They're getting you. <laughs> they're not helping you out <laughs> so uh, <laughs> there you go um, and, 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 I, and I don't really know how much of this is, is going on with you but apparently a study from Duke University in 2017 suggested, suggested dust from flame retardants in sofas and carpets as well as phthalates Substances added to plastics increase, to increase their flexibility harbors hormone-disrupting chemicals that can trigger the body to store fat. It's not your fault. It's the dust. The dust is out to get you. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> That's, that's some mighty fine stuff right there. That's a mighty fine piece of journalism telling me about that. <laughs> oh, 
God. Now Sweden, the country there of Sweden, they're um they are a uh, what you call a neutral country. They they don't get involved in in wars and such. So you know you're in Sweden, you should be good to go, right? Maybe not. Sweden warns every single household to prep for war. This is posted on ZeroHedge.com via Daisy Luther of the Organic Prepper blog. The government of Sweden has produced a 20-page pamphlet which they will be sending to each of the 4.8 million households in the country, urging them to get prepared for war. Although they haven't been at war for over 200 years, for some reason, right now, they want their citizens to get prepped. And fast. This goes along with an article that she wrote in January of this year, when the government urged people to be ready to cope without help for at least a week. At least a week. At least a week. Three months. Six months. Anyway, shortly before Christmas, the Swedish government quietly published a paper called Resilience. Initially, the government or the requirement had been for people to be prepared for three days without help, but it seems like that was a baby step. The government itself wants to be prepared for a three-month-long civil emergency, and they are urging citizens to take responsibility, too. It makes you wonder what the hell they know that they're not telling you about, doesn't it? This, however, is a direct approach uh, with preparedness instructions delivered to their doors. Here's what the government of Sweden is recommending. The booklet titled, If Crisis of War Comes, is an updated version of the dis uh, one distributed in the 1980s. It was compiled by the Swedish Civil Con Contingencies Agency, and then somehow they get the MSB out of that, um, and references several potential crises that could occur according to Swedish media. Disrupt. <laughs> it, it, they, 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 they totally lost me in this on on item number three, but here you go. One, disruption to IT systems. Yes, that could be a big problem. Incidents occurring in the rest of the world. Yes, that could be a big problem. Climate change. <laughs> Climate change. <laughs> Oh, God. And then increased tension in the Baltic region. So three out of four they did okay on, but climate change? Seriously? <laughs> oh, my God. The brochure warns Swedes of things that every prepper knows. In the event of societal emergency, help will be provided first to those in need most. Duh, it's called triage. The majority... Uh, must be prepared to cope on their own for some time. Here's what the Swedish website, the local, has to say about the warnings. Water, food, and warmth, as well as the ability to obtain information from authorities, <laughs> are the most important. No, the ability to obtain information is highly important, but from authorities, that's all, all just going to be a pack of lies. Pack of lies. Uh, this guide provides a checklist of foodstuffs and is and goods, and it's useful to have at home just in case, ranging from basic vegetables, which may last you a couple of days. Vegetables those don't last very long. Uh, to long-lasting oat or soy milk. No, you don't want soy milk. Yeah, almond milk works great and lasts as long as soy milk and um, will not poison you as soy will. Uh, tinned proteins like sardines and boiled meat, and items for providing warmth, access to communications, and for storing water. The booklet also has a checklist to help Swedes be, uh, be better prepared to cope with misleading information. Cope with misleading information, and they're telling you to get your information from authorities. <laughs> Noting that the best protection against false information and hostile propaganda is to critically appraise the source. Well, that's what I was doing. Your, your, your authority information, I'm critically appraising it, and I'm very critical of it. Anyway, we all have a responsibility to our country's safety and preparedness. 
do we? Uh, so it's important for everyone to also have knowledge of how we can contribute if something serious occurs. <laughs> anyway, they got some little uh, images here of the documents they're handing around, and uh, you know, general preparedness is, is something that you need to have, need to do. It's just a good thing because, well, if you're not prepared, then that means you're unprepared, and you don't want to be unprepared. <laughs> do ya? Oh God. <laughs> anyway, howdy, Vinny. And oh wait, Vinny here. Vinny text. He's not here anymore. Okay, I see. Oh, hi, hi, Hansel. <laughs> anyway, there's that for you. Uh, we're gonna play some more music. We'll be back. How goes the evening dirge in the land of Taco Benders? That is freaking racist, man. <laughs> Who the hell, man? Anyway. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Uh, this first track here, it's, I never heard of this band before today, but I found this song, and I kind of enjoyed it, so I thought I'd share it with y'all. Uh, th this is a, a band called telekinetic yeti the song is called stoned and feathered enjoy oh sleep with switch <laughs> I, I, I thought that song went on longer anyway <laughs> there i was sleep with switch uh, anyway that was the Almond brothers band with a midnight rider a cowboy tech request thank you cowboy tech uh, before that, we had the animals, and we got to get out of this place, and we kicked it off with telekinetic Yeti doing stoned and feathered. <laughs> Doesn't that song go on longer than that? Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> oh man, I tell you. <laughs> Just some funny stuff there. Now I have to, I have to respond to some of what's been going on here in the Real Liberty Media chat uh, because uh, I think, I think, I think there's some confusion. I think there's some uh, misinterpretation. Now where, where did that other one go? Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, I should, uh, I should probably do that one. Because I, I, I dug it. Uh, anyway. Um, yeah, I wish I had some drugs. Tell me, man. Um, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway. <laughs> So, well, what's been going on here in the chat? I, I, I have, to, I have to, I have to respond because it's weird, you know. Um, uh, but Hansel, Judge Dread, J Dread, as he goes by, says his Manchurian. He, I, that I, says I didn't do a show last week. Moose Girl didn't do a show last week. We didn't do a show last week. And so he said, he said I missed last week. Anyway, he says now his Manchurian candidate program is satisfied. His subliminal instructions are to listen to me and Moose every week here on the Freakers Ball. Although this is uh, technically balls to the wall, uh, uh, Freakers balls to the wall. All right, um, he's specifically listening for certain control words that tell him what his status is. Also for trigger words that tell me what pre-programmed tasks to perform. Now, I can't tell you the tasks here in, in a public forum, Hans, but I, I can give you the trigger phrase, Donald wears a red hat. Donald wears a red hat. <laughs> also, also he, 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 he says that there's a cult of personality uh, following me here on RLM. And no, that is not the case. This place just was here in the, the lost and the uh, people that were not accepted in other places, for the most part, I, I think. 
uh, wandered in here and were accepted and and enjoyed the company of the others that were here along with them. It has nothing to do with me. Uh, I don't even hardly chat that much. Um, I, I mean, <laughs> maybe I started it, but that's about where it ended, too. Um, and you probably have all been abducted and taken to Area 51, but not programmed to listen to me, as far as I know. If you have, nobody told me that you've been instructed to listen to me. And if I do give you secret instructions in your broadcasts, they're very simple, and they're very much the same and consistent time f throughout time, which is that the government is not your friend. The authority is fake, and it's only there because you believe it. <laughs> And Poxified, if you quit using duct tape as band-aids, that'd probably help you out there on that uh, hair ripping out situation. Uh, duct tape was never intended to be used as a band-aid. <laughs> anti hen anti hen is joining us. No, I don't want your crap. Quit doing this, man, you, you open up a page and all kinds of things pop up in the middle of it and you can't read anything that's going on. Duct tape for waxing. Hey! Uh, Alright, so here we go. From truthinmedia.com City forces group to remove anarchy symbol. Labeling it hate material. I have, I have I have words for the city there that thinks that an anarchy symbol, which is the opposite of hate material, if they want to know what hate material is, just look at whatever flag you got flying in front of your capital. That's hate material. That's telling you that we're the best, everybody else sucks. It's just a standard black circle, I mean, a circle with a black A in the middle of it. That, that's all. It's, 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 it's a, it's a un... Um, labeled anarchy. It's just anarchy in general. Anyway, Ontario, Canada. An anarchist group in Hamilton, a city in the Canadian province of Ontario, has been ordered by officials to remove the anarchy symbol from its headquarters. The officials have declared the symbol as hate material similar to a swastika. No, that, that big red and white thing with the maple leaf in the middle, that's similar to a swastika. An anarchy symbol is the opposite, despite police distancing themselves from the city's position. The anarchist symbol is considered to be hate material in the city of Hamilton and the Hamilton Police Services, and as such, must be removed. City spokesman Maria Fitzpatrick wrote in an email to CBC News. However, despite the claim by city officials the anarchy symbol represents hate material, local dis uh, police disputed the label that the symbol does not meet the threshold of a hate crime. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, Constable Joe Jerome Stewart of the Hamilton Police said, according to the CBC News, to the best of our knowledge, it's classified as an extreme left sign. No, anarchy has nothing to do with the left. <laughs> How misinformed are these people? Stewart further stated, so I don't know where the direction came that the Hamilton police, which of course the the swastika is an extreme left sign, <laughs> being as the swastika was was <laughs> the uh, National Socialist group. Anyway, so I don't know where the uh, the direction came that the Hamilton police have identified as a hate crime sign, because our per our hate crime coordinator that is not the case. According to the CBC News report, the mandate to remove the symbol from the tower, an anarchist meeting area, really, uh, was initiated after the group's headquarters were vandalized. So somebody vandalized them, and then that became a hate symbol, according to the city government. <laughs> Oh, God. Margaret, Margaret Cohn, a political science professor and urban social justice specialist at the University of Toronto, Toronto Scarborough, 
Jeez. Uh, described the city's move as very controversial interpretation of speech. This seems like constitutional lawsuit just waiting to happen. She noted, Cohn explained that for a symbol to be considered hate speech, it has to target an identifiable group. That seems to not be the case with the anarchist symbol, she said. Well, she's the most correct of any of these so far. Um, although... That remains to be seen. Anarchists are all left wing since the beginning of history, according to Hansel. <laughs> oh, yeah, another confused individual. Um, Prince Will Ogbon, the head of the Anti Racism Center in Hamilton, told CB, uh, CBC News that most of the anarchy groups in the past have been seen as anti racist and anti hate. They added that they are people that are pro-people and anti-government. Well, this guy, at least he, he gets it, pro-people, anti-government. <laughs> That's what an anarchist is. All right, in spite of the city potentially becoming vulnerable to lawsuits, Hamilton Mayor Fred Eisenberger, Eisenberger, I'll let you I'll leave that name hanging on you. On Wednesday, defended the order, according to a report from the Hamilton Spectator. Certainly, the anarchists have locally presented themselves, have done things that would be considered to be inappropriate. To who? So if you tie the two of them together, I would say that's a symbol of destruction and mayhem. No, government is a symbol of destruction and mayhem, and causing crisis to a particular area. No, government causes crisis to particular areas. <laughs> These guys got it so back asswards, man. I, I tell you, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just it's just it's just not even funny how bad how wrong these people are about everything. Uh, that they have to say. There's a duck. Get that duck. All right. <laughs> uh, it's an anarchy duck. Shoot it. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. They're calling it an asteroid. I'm not sure they're correct. But they're calling it an asteroid. Interstellar asteroid. I don't know how they know it's interstellar, but they're saying it is. Interstellar asteroid found orbiting Jupiter backwards. Just months after the discovery of our first known interstellar visitor, it turns out there's another asteroid from yet another star system how do they know this? They're making this up. Re residing in our cosmic club in plain view. Scientists reported Monday that this interstellar resident is an asteroid sharing Jupiter's orbit but circling in the opposite direction. Maybe it's not an asteroid at all. Maybe it's a spaceship. Where's Cooperzilla? I, I need him to weigh in on this. The asteroid, <laughs> actually I don't, he, he wants spaceships, he doesn't think there are spaceships, but there are. The asteroid, known as 2015 BZ-509, has been in this particular backward orbit around the sun ever since getting sucked into our solar system. How do you get sucked into the, so, the solar, solar system? I, I, you, you know how much distance there are between solar systems? A lot. <laughs> Anyway, so it got sucked into our solar system. The researchers said about two miles across, it joined our neighborhood in the first moments after our solar system formed four and a half billion years ago. So they're saying something that they have possibly no idea where it came from. Hap that something that happened four and a half billion years ago. <laughs> God. Uh, the French and Brazilian researchers based their findings on extensive computer simulations showing BZ has always orbited around the sun in reverse and thus harkens back to the beginning of our solar system. Really? Really? <laughs> 
the results published in the journal Royal Astronomical Society come from uh, come several months after the discovery of our first known interstellar visitor, a smaller cigar-shaped asteroid that zoomed by last fall. The passerby rock was named Oumuamama. <laughs> Oumuamama. <laughs> I don't know. Hawaiian for a Hawaiian for messenger from afar, uh, arriving first or scout. Oma Mama <laughs> is of interstellar origin, according to what? According to who? But uh, but it, but it's also only a tourist passing by our solar system, said lead author uh, Faith no, Fathi Nanumi of the University of Côte d'Azur in Nice, Nice, France. Um, BZ is not a bona fide immigrant. <laughs> it's just a passerby. It's just a tourist coming through. Um, <laughs> I'll let you read the rest of this. Because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I wonder I wonder what, how they identified it as a tourist. Did it have, like, on a Hawaiian shirt? I mean, they gave it a Hawaiian name. So, you know, maybe it was, had a Hawaiian shirt and, and, and some of those some of those shorts. What do you call those shorts? That that, at, that tourists wear. <laughs> oh, my, my, my mama. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so yeah, they're full of crap. I, I, I don't buy a word of it. I don't buy a word of it. Gibberish for kumbaya. Yeah. Exactly, Beth. <laughs> Oh, this will be a fairly lengthy set, but that's all right. You enjoy music. I enjoy music. And so music is what we do. Well, sometimes. So this music is for you. This first song is by a band called uh, John Five and the Creatures, and it's called Making Monsters. It's Fired up. That's disturbed there. Uh, yeah, fired up, boys, girls. Y'all have some good times. Uh, before that, we had uh, Rush doing 2112 with a, a video of, of the Peanuts gang there singing along, playing along. 2112. We did the whole thing. All 21 minutes and 12 seconds thereof. <laughs> and we kicked it off with John 5 making monsters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bongwater. Bongwater's nasty. <laughs> Bongwater. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want to you wanna try and uh, not, not do that if you... <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. You know. The thing, the thing about bongs, you know, is, is is the next, you know, the next morning after you've been partying, like late all night, and and you got to get up and uh, and and, you, and then you can smell the bongs there out in there in the room. Got to get out there and clean them. <laughs> oh. Love some good bonging, bonging. Yep. <laughs> oh boy, we do this one now. We'll save that for next week. All right, we'll do this one. I don't, cause I don't remember this one, but it sounds good. I don't remember who this band is. See, I find these bands sometimes they're on the tubes of you, and uh, I never heard of them before. And I, and I like a particular tune, and I'll play it, and it's like, who the hell are these guys? When it comes around to actually playing them. <laughs> oh, yeah, still here. Surviving. Nope, don't want that one. Let's see here. Which one do we want? 
Uh, that one, that one, this one, that one, this one, that one. Chooses, choices, choices. I, 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 I got so many choices to pick from, and I, I just, you know, I have a whole list here. It's probably 20 different versions. <laughs> I think this is the one I want. Hopefully it's still there. Yeah, it's still there. Okay, so we got uh, three and a half, ten and a half, ten forty-five, uh, fourteen, fifteen, forty-five. That's eleven, fifteen, fifteen. Is it sixteen? Sixteen. Okay, good. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just doing a little. Uh, that's the toughest part of the show. When Moose Girl's not here, and I have to actually do the math in my head, uh, <laughs> when she's not around, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, talking about whoever knows what. Um, so, uh, 16. So, remember that 16? That means that, uh, da, 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 44, 44. That's my marker. Now, I, I don't know why this is a new story, because it's not a new story. But it's a story, all the same. And I'm going to share it with you. From truthdig.com. It says that the Pentagon, or the, the warmongers, the, the death dealers, cannot account for $21 trillion. $21 trillion. <laughs> Yes, the Pentagon's own numbers show that it cannot account for $21 trillion. Yes, I mean trillion with a T. And this could change everything. But I'll get back to that in a moment. There are certain things in the human mind uh, that the human mind is not meant to do. Our complex brains cannot view the world in infrared, cannot spell words backwards during an orgasm. Have you ever tried? And cannot really grasp, and grasp numbers over a few thousand. A few thousand. We feel, yeah, we can conceptualize what a few thousand is. We've all been in stadiums with several thousand people. We have an idea of what that looks like and how sticky the floor gets. But when we get into the millions, we lose it. It becomes a fog of nonsense. Visualizing it feels like trying to hug a memory. We... we, we we may know that what one million dollars can buy, and what, and we may want that thing. But you probably know, don't know how tall a stack of a million doll, a million one dollar bills is. You probably don't know how long it takes a minimum wage employee to make a million dollars. Not in a single lifetime, that's for sure. And uh, that's <laughs> that's why trying to understand, truly understand, that the Pentagon spent. 21 trillion unaccounted for dollars between 1998 and 2015 and it washes over us like your mother telling you that your third cousin you've met twice is getting divorced yeah it seems vaguely upsetting but you forget about it in 15 seconds later because what else is there to do 21 trillion but let's get back to the beginning a couple of years ago, Mark Skidmore, an economics professor, heard Catherine Austin Fitz, former assistant secretary in the Department of Housing and Urban Development, say that the Department of Defense of the Office of the Inspector General had found $6.5 trillion worth of unaccounted for spending. In 2015, Skidmore, being an economics professor, thought something like, she means $6.5 billion, not trillion, because trillion would mean that the Pentagon couldn't account for more money than the gross domestic product of the entire United Kingdom. But still, $6.5 billion of unaccounted money, that's a crazy amount. She, <laughs> so he went and looked at the Inspector General's report, and he found something interesting. It was trillion. It was fucking $6.5 trillion in 2015 of unaccounted for spending. And I'm sorry for the cursing, but the word trillion is legally obligated to be prefaced with fucking. It is indeed way more than the UK's GDP. Skidmore did a little more digging. As Forbes reported in 2017, he and Catherine Austin Fitz 
conducted a search of government websites and found similar reports dating back to 1998. While documents are incomplete and original government sources indicate $21 trillion in unsupported adjustments have been reported to the Department of Defense and the Department of Housing and Urban Development for years of 1998 through 2015. <laughs> Let's stop for a second and conceive how much $21 trillion is, which you can't because your brain's short circuit. But let's try anyway. And I know I'm going over my time, but that's just too bad. The amount of money is supposedly in the stock market is $30 trillion. The entire stock market, $30 trillion. The GDP of the United States is $18.6 trillion. Picture a stack of money. Now imagine that stack of dollar bills is all $1,000 bills, which they don't even make anymore. Each bill says $1,000 on it, however. How high do you imagine that stack of dollars would be if it were $1 trillion? It would be 63 miles high. <laughs> imagine you make $40,000 a year. How long would it take you to make $1 trillion? Well, don't sign up for this task, because it would take you 25 million years, <laughs> which sounds like a long time. But, but I hear in the last, 10, then the last 10 million really fly by, because you already know your way around the office, where the coffee machine is and all that. The human brain is not meant to think about a trillion dollars. It's definitely not meant to think about $21 trillion our Department of Defense cannot account for. These numbers sound bananas. They sound like something Alex Jones found tattooed on the back, on his backside by extraterrestrials. But 21 trillion number comes from the Department of Defense Office of Inspector General, the OIG. Although, as Forbes pointed out, after Mark Skidmore began inquiring about the OIG reported unsubstantiated adjustments on the OIG's webpage, which documented, albeit in highly incomplete manner, these unsupported accounting adjustments was mysteriously taken down. <laughs> Luckily, people had already grabbed copies of the report, which, for now, there's a link to right here in this article, a PDF to a PDF. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I, 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 I gotta stop. I gotta stop. I'm, I'm, I'm way over my time now, three minutes over uh, my, my stop time that I had already suggested for myself. To, to get to finish this show on time. So I'm not going to finish the show on time. I'm going to finish the show at least three minutes late. I'm going to say four to five minutes late. So just stick around. <laughs> Twenty-one trillion dollars. Conceive of it. Put that in your brain. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, here, here we go. This is Orianti. Bam, bow, lamb, indeed, spider bait. Yes, indeed, doing Black Betty there. Oh, very nice. Before that, we had a band called Alien Weaponry with Kai Tangata. <laughs> Or, as uh, as uh, anti Hen put it, uh, Maori Metal. Uh, and we kicked it off there with uh, Orianti doing uh, Live from the Canyon, Track 7, Filthy Blues. Lovely stuff, lovely. All right, folks, it's been a fun time. I had a great time. Glad you all joined in uh, in whatever manner you joined in. And uh, I'll be back again next Friday for sure. Hopefully, Moose Girl will be with me. And if not, well, it'll be more me. <laughs> anyway, y'all have yourself a great weekend. If you get the uh, Monday off, enjoy the extra day from your slave labors. And if you don't work at all, then enjoy every day. <laughs> Peace.